We don't have time for them anymore. <laughs> they can defer with us. They can disbelieve all of this. It doesn't bother us. Because we know the countdown has begun. We know it's just a little bit more time. When a Muslim army will destroy the state of Israel, the Holy Land will then be liberated. The true followers of Ibrahim alayhi salam will then take control of the Holy Land. The state of Israel of Suleiman alayhi salam will be restored by Isa alayhi salam. And the Prophet said, Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. He said that Jesus will rule as a just hakim adil. A just ruler from Jerusalem. And so the prophecy will be fulfilled. And the golden age will be restored. But it is the followers of Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam which would have inherited the legacy of Suleiman alayhi salam. It is now 20 past 10 and I finished the first part of the lecture. <laughs> that is, I have finished that part of the lecture which pertains to Dajjal in his capacity of Al-Masih. If we had the time to go to the second part, which we don't, we would now proceed to the methodology. How does Dajjal achieve his objectives? What is his methodology? Hmm? Uh, the Prophet said, wasalam, every messenger of Allah has warned his people about Dajjal. But I'm going to tell you something that no one has ever said before me. So this is very important. The jaw sees with one eye, his left eye, he's blind in the right eye. It looks like a bulging grape. How could this be so important? A one-eyed man. That no prophet of Allah ever spoke about it. That this had to be saved until the very last prophet. What is there so important about a one-eyed man? There was a one-eyed man in 1967 who was a very, a very good general, eh? Moshe Dayan. There was a one-eyed man who led the British fleet to defeat the French at Trafalgar, Lord Nelson. Eh? So one-eyed men could do great things. So what is there so significant about Dajjal's one eye. Hmm? Maybe it is not to be understood literally. Huh? Let's see. Let's see. Dajjal has the word kafir written between his eyes on his forehead. Kafir. And every mu'min will be able to read it. Oh? So, what about those who are not mu'min? Don't they have eyes too? How come they can't read? And this one can read. Maybe he's not reading with these eyes, huh? Maybe. Let's see. Every mu'min will be able to read it, whether he is katib, can read and write, Oh, Khair Khatib. He cannot read and write, he still be able to read it. So now it's clear. Now it's clear. He's not reading with these eyes. If he's not reading with these eyes, with which eyes is he reading? Do we have any other eyes beside these eyes? Do we have any other ears beside these ears? Once you can answer that question, you have penetrated the major ground of attack of the jaw. 
Dajjal sees with one eye indicates that Dajjal has only external vision. And therefore knowledge comes only from external vision, the external senses. Dajjal is blind in the right eye indicates that Dajjal is internally blind. The Quran says, the Quran says, many ayat, many ayat. The Quran says that the heart, when the heart has iman in it, and when Allah confers upon it nur, like Mawlana Abdul Alim Siddiqui rahimahullah, when Allah confers upon it nur, then the heart can see. And the heart can hear. And so Dajjal is blind in the right eye, Dajjal is internally blind. When Dajjal launches his attack, therefore, what he does is that he reduces people to a state of internal blindness. They see with only their external vision now. But said the Prophet ﷺ to Islam, Dajjal comes with two things. What are the two things? A handphone and a computer? Huh? Huh? Dajjal comes with two things. He comes with, help me somebody, help me somebody. Huh? No. He comes with two things. Come on somebody. Yes? Jannah and Jahannam. He comes with a river and a fire, says the Prophet Islam. He comes with a river and a fire. But his river is a fire. And his fire is the cool waters of a river. Whoever falls in his river will have his load of sin increased. And whoever falls in his fire would be relieved of his load of sins. Hmm? In other words, the age of the Jal will be an age in which appearance and reality would be completely different from each other. If judgment is based only on external observation, then judgment will be based on external appearance. But the internal reality is different. And so judgment would be wrong. And this is why Surah Al-Kahf has given us the story of, come on somebody, of, of, yes, of Musa alayhi salam and Khizr alayhi salam. Musa alayhi salam, because of a certain answer that he gave, we don't have the time to tell you the story now. He is now seeing with only his external sign. And on three occasions he formulates judgment based only on external observation. Number one, the boat. The boat? The boat? How come only some people are shaking their heads? And the others are looking at me strangely. Do you read Surah al Huh? The boat? Huh? Number two, the boy. Number three, the wall. Those of you who are not shaking your head, you better go and read Surah Al-Kaf now. Eh? <laughs> On all three occasions, he's wrong. He's wrong. His judgment is wrong. So, even if you have a PhD from MIT, 